Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and ladies and gentlemen, a brand new, not really a brand new, but a better ad block solution is available. Now I watched a video from Lewis Rossman a couple days ago talking about this ad blocker, and I kind of wanted to jump into it because I, I really was not down with it at first. Because as you all know, I, I really love talking about computer security, computer privacy. So coming across an ad blocker that apparently just clicks on every single ad on the internet was a little bit shocking to me because I was wondering for a second, interfacing with the ad network is already haram, okay? But why? Why would somebody prefer this over standard ad block, U block origin, which by the way, all right, if you don't have an ad blocker, uh, I highly personally recommend you use an ad blocker. I know that's against YouTube's terms of services. Don't use it on YouTube. Uh, but if you are browsing the rest of the internet that I'm not adhering to the TOS by, use an ad block, okay? Look, the feds recommend it. The actual security people recommend to use ad blocks because the ad networks in the entire world are so predatory, not just from a security privacy standpoint, but they literally serve you malware in the ads, okay? You know, you ever come across like an old person that just like comes across a website where, where it just barrages them with ads? And sometimes the ads are sneaky and they click on something and they download an extension or a program. And then, Lord behold, everything is taken from them. You do not need to come across that, okay? I would say an ad blocker is better than most antiviruses. Ad blockers and common sense, okay? The brown, uh, the Indian guy's method to browsing the internet safely. But anyways, uBlock Origin is a pretty good uh, browser uh, extension. Unfortunately, if you're a Chrome user, okay, I'm a brave user, meaning that I use Chrome. Most people on the internet use Google Chrome. So my back is still completely fucked up. This extension may soon no longer be supported because it doesn't follow the best practices. Now sure, you could get the neutered version, the light version because of Manifest V3, but there is a better option. Now this is ad nauseum, right? It's clicking ads so you don't have to. So as they say, as online advertising becomes ever more ubiquitous and unsanctioned, ad nauseum works to complete the cycle by automating ad clicks universally. So the thing is, ad networks work on basically surveilling the user, okay? It's a surveillance economy. They work on surveilling who you are. You know, if you ever wondered, damn, Muda, how do they know what I want to look for? Chances are, if you search for something on Google, or if you go to specific websites, the ad networks that you go to are constantly working. Really, the ads you see on the internet are kind of fed into like these big companies. So Google is one of the largest ad uh, distributors. I think Facebook comes into it, Microsoft. People who run these ad networks, there's not a lot of them. So chances are the same website kind of feeds into the same ad network. Now these ad networks, alongside serving you ads, basically kind of profile you, the user, and figure out where the fuck you are on the internet at any given moment. So in a roundabout way, it's kind of like a weird tracking, right? It's, it's imagine, imagine, having a, imagine having a private investigator just watching every single thing that you do. It's creepy, right? You would consider it almost stalking in a way, in a way too. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, this ad extension is not entirely perfect. For instance, Google has actually banned ad nauseum from their store. Why did Google ban these guys in 2017? Well, because Google had banned them from its store and they basically learned that Google now disallows users from manually installing and updating ad nauseum. So when they asked Google for the reason for this, the actual uh, Google response was an extension should have a single purpose that is clear to user but providing no details as to what multiple purposes might be. To be clear, ad nauseum has a single purpose, which we believe to be readily apparent to users, which is literally just click on every single fucking ad. To be clear, it seems that Google most likely doesn't appreciate ad nauseum because for them, selling advertisement is important. Having people click every single ad serves to piss Google off. In fact, if anything, it's many reasons why even entire YouTube channels get demonetized for spam, right? For misleading the advertiser, because if you're a content creator that tells the users, please click on all the ads on the channel, that can get your channel struck, even demonetized, because what you're doing is absolutely pissing in the, in the face of YouTube's core moneymaker, the ad system. So at this moment in time, obviously Firefox is one of the only browsers that isn't Chrome-based, and it allows you to install this into your extension. So I want to show you very quickly how this works, right? So here I've got, you know, Firefox. I've got Furry Fox right over here. Now with Furry Fox, I can load up a web page known as GeoGuessr, right? 
Now this is GeoGuessr, and let me just turn down the audio so I don't get barraged. Now I can play a simple game where, again, I just uh, figure out where every province in Canada is. So very simple, Manitoba, Northwest Territories, Prince Edward Island, okay, British Columbia, uh, Alberta, which would be right here, Quebec, God bless, Nova Scotia, and then Newfoundland and Labrador, New Brunswick, Saskatchewan, Yukon, none of it, and of course, my pride and joy, Ontario. Now, of course, I didn't do this just to flex how hard I knew the 13 provinces and territories. However, the reality of this is, if you're looking at the page, it's clean. There's no ads. It's, 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 it's perfect. It's brilliant. Where do the ads go? Well, because of ad nauseum, it's built on top of uBlock Origins, but it doesn't actually get rid of the ads. It actually keeps the ads. It uses CSS to hide them from you, but it actually clicked on all of them. How do we know it clicked on all of them? Well, we can look at the ad vault. So inside this page over here, if you actually just go to the extension right here, click on the ad vault, you can see that these are all the ads that <laughs> the extension was clicking on. So yeah, I was browsing GTA 5 stuff, clicked on a bunch of ads on those websites, fly nonstop to Buffalo, food bank usage, yada yada, woman in black, okay, the movie right here, blah, blah, blah. So all of this stuff got clicked on. Now, according to ad nauseum, which clicked on these advertisements. Now, because a lot of these ad systems run on uh, pay-per-click systems, meaning that every time you click these ads, there's a payout, right? You can see that somewhere in the browsing of five minutes, I spent 30, or I actually cost the ad network $39.14. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily okay in terms of obviously, you know, <laughs> Google's TOS. I'm sure Google may not enjoy this, especially when it comes to uh, invalid ad activity, right? Because ultimately the advertiser, if they notice that people aren't actually, you know, going to, you know, whatever vertive is, it's just the ad is clicked on, but no actual user looked at it. Well, <laughs> then they kind of paid for, for nothing really. But really this is not a privacy focused extension, right? This is more an extension to basically stick two fingers up in the air in front of the surveillance ad network that we have. So one of the reasons why I guess it's not so much private is I want you to kind of think of it like this. Imagine this little like a line represents all internet users in the world. Now, of course, every internet user is basically giant dollar signs. So when you install an extension like this, or actually really even an ad blocker, or you put in a lot of privacy features, you become this little ad sign. So of course, in all the internet users, if you're just sitting there as this one single guy blocking all tracking, getting rid of all the ads, then for a site, it'll notice that every single normal person that just has no ad block or no privacy blockers looks kind of like this. You stand out as the one person that is trying to hide. So of course, in order for privacy to work, you have to make sure that most of these people or a whole chunk of them use ad blockers or privacy focus, right? It's now, of course, for ad nauseum, they say it works like a list based blocker, hiding our blocking ads and trackers. However, it provides two additional features, which is the vault that I showed earlier. And of course, it provides insights into algorithmic profiles created by ad networks. So what ad nauseum does is it simulates clicks on ads. So basically it sends requests out to these guys in order to confuse the trackers and diminish the value of aggregated tracking data. Remember, why does it fucking matter? If your profile exists out there and to Google or really any ad network, you look like the one dumbass that clicks on every single fucking ad, then your entire online profile is basically a polluted, you know, farce. It, it basically means that even though you stick out like a Christmas tree, like a, like a, like, like you stick out like a Christmas tree at this point, um, you will completely, all right, give useless data, right? That's all you're doing. You're basically providing dog shit data to the ad networks. You're not a user that clicks on any normal regular ad. Now I want you to remember, Google banned ad nauseum, even though they had the ability, by the way, to identify misclicks with advertisements, right? People who are defrauding the ad network. So again, it shouldn't be difficult for Google to flag a user that's clicking on every ad and then immediately pull them out of the ad counting system, just so it doesn't look bad to the advertisers. In reality, for this to be banned, it definitely appears, at least it's disruptive enough that Google is going out of its way to specifically get rid of this extension as well as other extensions like it. Again, they allow ad blockers on their website. They allow ad blockers on their Google you know, uh, extension store. 
But this is the one that immediately gets removed from the web store. You have to go out of your way to install this into your Chrome browser. Now, because of the way ad nauseum works, because it doesn't just get rid of the ad, if you're on a limited internet connectivity, meaning that you actually pay for data caps and shit like that, do not use ad nauseum, okay? Because you don't wanna add extra bandwidth when you really don't need to. If you just wanna block the fucking ads, just get yourself like the Brave browser or Firefox or Waterfox or any ad blocking extension, right? You don't need to, you don't need to go this far. This is mostly for people that are so pissed with the ad tracking system, like yours truly, uh, but yeah, at some point you have to stick two fingers in the air and let the entire goddamn world know that you don't like these people. You don't like this system. And ad networks hate this shit so much to the point that out of all of these systems before these guys was track me not. And even these people ended up having their extension tracked as malware. And this ain't the first time that I've seen Google or even Microsoft use their malware systems to trigger false positives when uh, false positives shouldn't have been triggered. So again, to show you one of the things about privacy regarding this, obviously, is that no matter how you cut and slice this, this is not private. And again, I, I wanna show you how the internet kind of tracks you too. So in order to do it, I wanted to kind of build upon a video that I made earlier, like last week, where I, I showed you, uh, you know, remote access Trojans, right? Like I showed you hacker perspectives. So to show you how companies grab your data, this is a website that you know I quickly made up right here. It's a fingerprint collector. So when you go to this website and you click collect fingerprint, I have a little node server that is running right here on my system. So the moment I click this, it will add this browser's fingerprint. So right over here, you can see that it collected my fingerprints and what the website knows, or really the ad network in this case, it'll know a lot of things about your user, right? So this is how they profile you as a person. So on my fingerprint alone, they identified my entire system. So they calculated my operating system. They calculated the language that I have set on my system, the time zone. So they know that I am living or at least should be living in Toronto. Now this specific fingerprint gets caught by on another website, then they'll know exactly which websites that I'm going to, right? Basically the fingerprint should at least be unique enough for again, these ad networks to ping between websites. So let's say that I go to newgrounds.com and they're using an ad that's served by Google. And then I go to www.gta forums and both websites use ads served by Google. They'll know which websites that I'm going to. They'll know where I am. They know what my profile is. And you might be like, well, what if I slap on incognito mode, Muda? And, and of course we can try that too, just to, just, to, just to show you how things look like with incognito mode. Again, even with incognito mode enabled, what this does is it usually just prevents cookies from running. But if you still collected information, incognito mode still slips the same fingerprint on my system. Now, these are just simple fingerprints that I'm pulling off. Again, for a lot of these ad networks, I want you to look at it like a game of cat and mouse. So again, for a lot of browsers that have anti prior pri or like sort of anti tracking features, they will constantly whack a mole, whatever these trackers are looking for. And then likewise, the tracker will always try to find new ways to catalog the user. So when it comes to Google, Facebook or Amazon or Microsoft, there are far more different ways that they're using to identify each and every single person on the internet. Now again, for ad nauseum, in contrast to other blockers, ad nauseum does not block conventional visual ads, but hides them, so like I showed you earlier, it does not prevent such resources from being downloaded, it, but only impacts the way the page is rendered to your system. That is done as safely as possible with cookies and other identifiers disabled. Once an ad has been detected, CSS is used to render it invisible. So again, what ad nauseum does is it clicks the ads by issuing an HTTP request to the URL in which they lead. So again, it's a lightweight way of clicking on the ad. And they even tell you, it's like, you should not combine this with other blockers, okay? Much like not using two or three condoms at once, because that is a pretty stupid fucking thing to do. You should not be buddying up on ad blockers. They usually conflict with each other, right? So again, they say that if you're using uBlock, Privacy Badger, Ad Blocker, that may conflict with Ad Nauseam. Now again, the goal here is to, again, protect the users from the various stalking that happens to them on the internet. But the other thing is to show the advertisers through you lighting up like a Christmas tree that this is not okay, all right? So this is again, more protest wear than I would say even privacy wear. 
Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, there's been a lot of discussion on this too. Like 2023, I was reading this post from Ad Nauseum is a seriously terrible idea. It's actually dangerous. The idea that you can trick advertisers into polluting your dossier and make it useless to them is fundamentally fraud. Uh, flawed. Every scrap of data collected about you will be used against you. It doesn't matter if it's accurate or not. Nobody cares if the data they have about you is accurate. And I do kind of disagree over here. The thing about this is ultimately there really isn't any perfect privacy solution. If you want to be completely private on the internet, just don't fucking use it. Simple as that. Or if you want to use things like the Tor browser, maybe go over there and stick to it. But generally speaking, a lot of the biggest ad networks will always still in some way be able to track you. What this does do is it pollutes the data, right? It, it at least shows that you're protesting against the system. Now, whether that protest has any effects, who really knows? But I think the better alternative to this is if you really do care about your privacy, maybe politically get charged and maybe raise this up, you know, in front of your state or maybe even the federal government if you have that power or will to do so. I think in the next few years, especially with the advent of like artificial intelligence companies, maybe we really do need stricter data protection laws to protect us from being constantly spied on by a lot of these disgusting organizations. Now, there have been uh, assumptions too. There have been like mentions that people have been banned from Google services because of this. And while I have not found any absolute like mention of this or con confirmation, the thing about it is, is Google banned this specific ad blocker from their network. So if you go to the, you know, Google extension store, you know, if you look up uBlock, you'll find out both uBlocks, right? You'll see uBlock origin is just sort of sitting there, right? It's an ad blocker that's just sitting out there on the internet. But if you look for ad nauseum, you will not find a single mention of this or track me not. And I think the reason for a lot of this is because the way that these guys handle their ad blockers, it definitely is a threat to Google system. A threat so much in scope that they would outright just rather ban it. And for some people, that's reason enough for them to install this extension and move on with it. For me, I think the important part about this is like, listen, at the end of the day, you can't use the internet without an ad blocker. And as cool as this stuff really is, I still think the better alternative for at least your privacy and your protection is probably just stick with like a Brave browser thing or like Waterfox or I think Firefox is pretty good built in uh, ad blocking if you don't want to use anything Chrome related or just stick to uBlock Origins or uBlock Origins Lite if you don't want to go through the hassle of extend or like uh, keeping Manifest V2 alive. As cool as Ad Nauseam is, and as interesting, as much as I would love to use this, and maybe I will for a little bit, I think at the end of the day, I, I, there is still an aspect of it that seems to not, like I get the obfuscation, right? But the only way this is gonna work is if millions of people download this. And the thing about it is with ad blockers, you would be surprised how little the internet uses ad blockers to begin with. You would think with the amount of discussion online, everyone fucking uses this shit. In reality, not many people do. Uh, you know, at least in compared to the vast variety of internet users out there. But yeah, you know, if you want to use an internet like an ad blocker, this doesn't seem bad, <laughs> but I almost feel like I'm going to get shot in the head talking about it any longer than I am. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.